We've had an email from Marjorie Sparing who says, probably a silly question, and actually there's no such thing as a silly question, Marjorie, so um, no, I don't think it is, whatever it is, but I'm only on my fourth project and I was just wondering how Philippa stores and organises the wool left over from completed kits so that it can be used another day. I have some of my leftovers in a tin and some in the plastic bags from the kits. What is the correct method of storing the yarn, please? Well, she's actually given her, her consent very kindly to read this out. And Marjorie, that is a very good question. And uh, we were just down in our production room today looking at the storage of naturally dyed wools, which are obviously more sensitive than the Appleton's ones, which are fixed with a chemical dye, but based on natural colours. Um, well, first of all, you don't want the wool to get hot and sweaty in the bag. So if you are storing the leftover wools in our seal top bags, then you really need to leave a little tiny air hole. I like the moth proof clip top plastic boxes that which have a really strong seal to keep out the moths. Obviously, our storage is moth repellent anyway. I would, however, advise you to use the wools as soon as possible, and that's why we sell, um, well, there are many reasons why we have kits with complete skeins of wools. I just can't bear the thought of anybody running out. But also, I'd like you to use the leftover wools, and I use them for things like um, making a cord edging or tassels or stitching another design. So I really would just buy a spare linen <laughs> to be honest and um, most of our kit wools will do two kits if you bought a kit and bought the same wools again or a different design then i'm sure with the knowledge you've got from the doing the first kit you could actually make a second design and that's a very economic way of continuing with your stitching passion now another lady called bridget has emailed in today and said please could you tell me if you run day courses or can put me in touch with any company that does i'm not very good at learning from reading instructions oh, i quite agree with you there bridget neither am i never do what i'm told um anyway so she says i have never done any crawl work but in the past have done a lot of sewing although little embroidery gosh bridget i want you on my day courses <laughs> I love newbies. It makes me teach so much better and, um, you know, to have somebody keen to learn but can wield a needle already is just great. So you're a gift to any tutor and I wish you well. Um, I would just, you know, get in touch with the Royal School Needlework. They run day courses if you're in the UK or you're visiting. I would um, get hold of your local embroiderer skills and ask people who they would advise. Um, we give lots and lots of free tuition on our videos. Katie and I have been <laughs> filming every day uh, for years. I've been doing them for years, but Katie's been doing them recently and they're just amazing to get a, a new person's fresh eye on it. And Katie's been quite nervous, but um, a very good person as an ambassador for new people to cool work. So uh, I would look at lots and lots of uh, books and just decide what you like the look of and try and replicate that look. So um, that's why we started doing kits because I couldn't actually gather the materials. I lived on a remote farm, very little, very few needlework shops in the UK. And um, apart from going down to the Royal School and having the odd week of tuition, um, you know, I, I really have learned to replicating old pieces. Another um, very nice email is from a lady called Jackie F, who has um, bought several of our kits and she's now moved on to the Scottish Play, which I have to say is an advanced kit. And she's confused and struggling with stitching the laden couched area variation too. So I'm putting a shout out to anybody out there who can put something on Facebook and just say what you know what their issues were with it as well and if there's anything we can do to improve our instructions we're really really interested in hearing where people stumble or you know where we've actually frankly got it wrong so um we're, we're really trying very very hard and we proofread everything a gazillion times but um you know it's a newish kit and we'd really like to hear from anybody several people have finished it very successfully so uh, it is possible, <laughs> so don't give up hope, Jackie, and uh, please keep in touch, everybody, and we'll see what the issue is. Um, she said, I don't, also don't seem to be able to put the cross stitch in without the bars below bowing and pulling out of alignment. Ooh, 
I've tried several ways of getting it right, but nothing seems to work. Please, can you offer any advice? Well, to, I, I love a picture. I mean, ideally with these emails, I'd like a picture of where you think it's going wrong. So if any, anybody could do this when they ask a question, take a picture, attach it to the email, and then I can see it, and I can usually see exactly where you go, are going wrong. Usually, 99% of the time, and you know, it makes me sound much more cleverer than I am, but it's usually because it's not tight enough on the frame. And you know, if it's really tight on the frame and your needle's making a lovely noise that goes through the linen, then you know, it really, um, it really can't go wrong. That's what I feel, because you can't really, over stitch it, over gather it. But um, my advice to anybody who says that their stitches don't look quite right is just bung another stitch over the top and that's what they did in the past and it always seemed to work for them. Um, she said, I've, I've, I've uh, so excited to start it and um, so a little help would be much appreciated and she's already enjoyed three of our kits. Jackie, my heart goes out to you. I feel terrible now and I really want to keep communicating about this so perhaps this can be a um, conversation and I think you are on Facebook in our Cruel Work Company group and our Facebook page on um, the, the Cruel Work Company group Facebook page is for our kits and for advice and for encouragement from other people so you know even if you think you haven't made a great job of it and it's your first kit please post and please put it on because it's so encouraging for everybody and as Katie has, has done you know she's better soul for us all and said oh I wasn't quite happy with that and my second leaf was better and I might go back and change it but if I don't notice it I won't you know and really really encouraging so Jackie we're with you <laughs> Keep going. Um, go and do an easy bit and we'll come back to that later. Thank you very much.